I don't know what was said. You're a warden. I don't know if you killed King Kalen and make her forgive me. I don't care. But that bounty on your head could feed a lot of hungry bellies. Attack! Something. What now? I think we've allowed something to our
The path of righteousness is full of hardship, but the Maker smiles upon its travelers. Target practice, anyone? The path of righteousness is full of hardship, but the Maker smiles upon its travelers. And the stars stood still, the winds did quiet prayer and thanks.
here. I hear there isn't even... Any luck with that poison? Or you're here to see my stock? Or you're here to see my stock. Splendid! Uh, if those beasties come on my land, I hope it teaches them a lesson. Yeah, enough gold to cover any of your expenses and then some. Hey! <laughs> Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. The name's Bodon Fedek, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. Grey wounds. Hmm. My, that does rather explain a lot. No offense, but I suspect there's more excitement on your path than my boy and I can handle. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune, though. Goodbye. Now then, let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we?
Bad dreams, huh? Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. That's what I'm here for to deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. No, not voices. It's not so simple. He spoke directly to my soul, in a language no human tongue can express. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Blight devours everything? He's still here. I hear him in the wind and the waves. I feel him in the sunlight that warms my skin. I know what the Chantry says about the Maker, and what should I believe? What I feel in my heart, or what others tell me? Thank you. It's nice to find someone who agrees. I know what I know, and no one will ever make that untrue. What do you need? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. I think he came from High Ever, or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime. See about putting up something in his honor. I don't know. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... Yes, I imagine you really have, haven't you? Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. 
I'd like that. So would he, I think. Why are we stopping? There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. I am. Decide. I am a Sten of the Beresad. I did not choose to be who I am any more than you did. I have always fought in war, human. Some of them. They aren't all alike. Generally, I do not see how this matters. Seheron and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. As you wish. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fenwick, at your service, once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Wonderful. Thank the gentleman, won't you, boy? Thank you, sir. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Our kingdoms once spanned the length of Thedos, from majestic Orzammar to Kalsharok to glittering Darmalin far to the west. They say the gold and silver veins ran so thick through the stone of Darmalin that the entire city sparkled. The Darkspawn took it all, of course. One by one, the old tigers fell, and then all that was left was Orzammar. But we were talking about how I ended up here, weren't we? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit, and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the Darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigers, they're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure, something worth a little gold. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. I thank the stone every single day. Now. Is there anything the boy, or I, can get you? 
Look, we... We don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tithes, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. People flee from the Blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. It may not be my blood, true, but I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boy's a natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery addled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. With King Kaelin dead, the throne falls to Queen Honora. She's made her father the region, however, at least for now. I think Kaelin's father, old King Merrick, would have approved. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount.
Thank you so much. Unexpected. Thank you. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was he now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. Enchantment! What do you wish of me? If you must. I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. Anyone with sufficient will, but the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. Indeed, you could learn the spells required if I cared to teach you. There were nights when the wilds called to me, it is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf. Listened as a cat, proud shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human, I am under no illusions to the contrary. They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, even were I to ask. No, tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the circle of magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. 
Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded lore from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could, but as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. I'm shocked that you think so, being a mage of the circle as you were. But perhaps you felt a little like a caged bird as well, caught within that dark tower. I thought so. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? I wouldn't advise it. But enough of such talk, let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. You're a hard man to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy, Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins, Levy the trader, Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am, carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's... Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. What I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. My family, well, past a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Arland died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. I ask for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honour. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honour. Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar, said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. A thousand blessings upon you, warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. 
Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hare is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. I am going to pretend I never heard that. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. I just did. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. Oh, he's just trying to be manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. True warrior, and worthy of respect. <laughs> <laughs> 